Before I get started, guys, um, I want to point out that yes, I have been demonetized. No, I have not been told why. I don't know what video did it. I don't know what part of what video did it. They simply said hate speech, and I, I don't know anything. I, I, I've been told nothing by YouTube. And frankly, I might be financially fucked if this, if this sticks. So please consider checking the description of this video because I've put links to support the channel down there. They're also on screen too, so if you want to financially support what I'm doing, um, thank you very much. Again, even in a time like this, please don't feel obligated. I know people are out of jobs, I know people are, are getting sick, I know things are, are generally on a downturn for everyone. Before you give me anything, make sure you take care of yourself, okay? By the way, yesterday's video got a lot of people angry, and I mean, fair enough. But like I've said, I've always been neutral on Trump. I will give him the benefit of the doubt, but I will give anybody the benefit of the doubt. Nobody's perfect. If you're sub to this channel for unapologetic god-emperor simping, you're in the wrong place, unfortunately. But that being said, the main reason that I released it the time that I did is because basically I had recorded it before my demonetization, and frankly, guys, that kind of that, that kind of hit me pretty hard. I mean, like, motivationally, you know? I definitely just took some time off. And you know, it is actually a little bit harder to get the gumption to do this sort of thing when you know that YouTube's still running ads on your videos and just taking 100% of the revenue. But I took a couple days off and I said, you know, I've got to do something, I guess. I mean, I have, I have some kind of appeals process working, so hopefully it'll work out. But in the meantime, I've got to do something, right? So, so I took this video that I had recorded, you know, a day or two earlier, and I finally finished the editing and put it out. Of course, bad timing, because at the same time, Donald Trump tested positive, as well as his wife, for coronavirus. We will begin our quarantine and recovery process immediately. We will get through this together. Holy shit, dude. Stock futures sharply fall after President Donald Trump tweets that he has tested positive for coronavirus. Now, this happened shortly after the debates, and everyone was thinking, oh no, does Joe Biden have coronavirus? But it turns out that Joe Biden says, or rather the person who runs his Twitter account, because we all know he doesn't actually use his own Twitter, they say, I'm happy to report that Jill and I have tested negative for COVID. Thank you to everyone for your messages of concern. I hope this serves as a reminder, wear a mask, keep social distance, and wash your hands unless you're going to a protest. Of course, not everyone is civil. Here's Ilhan Omar. As someone who lost my own father to this virus and seen the pain it causes, I don't wish it on anyone. Over 200,000 people have now died while this administration actively ignores public health guidance and suppresses science. For months, we have been hoping for a simple acknowledgement from the president to hear the words, we will get through this together. And now we only hear those words when it is about him, not the hundreds of thousands of people who have lost their lives and the millions whose families have been touched by it because of his malfeasance. Y you know, considering that you are a representative in the House, you should understand that the presidency, the office of the presidency, does not have the power to do the things you're asking of it. It's in the 10th Amendment. The states have to handle this. The state governors, the state governments. The President of the United States and Republicans in Minnesota are actively spreading a deadly virus. They are a risk to the public health of my constituents and our country. Republicans are the ones that are spreading the virus around. Not the protesters! And yes, we're going to be going back to that protester well quite a bit, because there's going to be some serious problems here. Republicans asking for decorum and empathy like they didn't wish violence on protesters, Lamau. Also, he's a white supremacist running a fascist government, and 209,000 people have died due to his mismanagement and peddling that it's a hoax. I have zero sympathy for these assholes. It's pretty amazing. You can, you can tell who the people are that don't actually get their news from multiple sources. They get it from one ideological source, or they just filter what they get through that ideological framework. Because you get nonsense like this. I know I'm not a Republican, but I don't wish violence on protesters. I don't even wish violence on rioters. I, I would rather the riot not happen. I would rather the riot stop before violence, self-defensive violence, becomes necessary. But having the fortitude to use violence to defend yourself does not mean that you wish for violence. And frankly, these idiots don't know what fascism is. Like, I recall the right calling Obama a fascist back when the Democrats kept winning. This happens all the fucking time. It happens every single, every single election cycle. Every single time there's been like a presidential shift, the op the opposition is like, "Oh, this guy's a fascist. He's taking away our rights." And it's like, no, no. I mean, Obama did some some terrible stuff, obviously, but no, no one's a fascist, dude. So, just a quick question: on a scale of one to ten, 
Is this your favorite or most favorite October surprise in the history of electoral politics? For me personally, I think it ranks pretty high up there, but you know, love to hear your thoughts. But of course, we know it's not about civility to these people. They think civility is white supremacy or something. It's entirely about power. That is the point of the Marxist lens, is to frame everything in terms of power politics. Well, more specifically, class conflict, but that just boils down to power politics in reality. For example, a certain mold of liberal sees the right as a jousting partner to have eternal sparring matches with in the effervescent marketplace of ideas, rather than a class enemy to be defeated by any means necessary and most efficiently. This explains a lot of their behavior. This is because liberals understand that their political opponents are generally not evil, like sometimes you get the occasional evil person, but most of the time, the real functional answer to any given problem is somewhere between the liberal and conservative positions. Additionally, most socialists and most fascists probably aren't bad people either, they're just horribly misguided. But when everything is class conflict, when it all boils down to power politics, <coughs> when all war is a war over material conditions, this is the kind of brain-dead attitude that you get. The reason that you have eternal sparring matches within the marketplace of ideas is because none of us, None of us, including the socialists, know what the right answer is. Have no idea what the right answer is. Some people think that they do. Some people think that they can take any topic, pick a, pick a topic, doesn't matter, filter it through the Marxist lens, and out comes a prepackaged proper answer for it. But of course, in reality, that almost never actually works. You find the truth not by following a dogma, but by taking every single fact you can and clashing them against each other until what remains is a pure product, the truth. That is what the marketplace of ideas is. And that is why you need those eternal sparring matches. To simply view those who oppose you as your eternal enemy, even in those cases where they're factually correct, means that you're not interested in truth, you're interested in power. And of course, this squirrel person here is kind of a known socialist on Twitter, and they post their own take along with some other takes from neolibs who are wishing Trump a speedy recovery. And the message is clear. Civility. Compromise. Coming to, at the very least, a reasonable understanding if you don't always agree. Making up. Becoming friends again. These things are the antithesis of the idea that everything is power politics. Trump went to Bedminster and exposed staff and fundraiser attendees when he already knew he had COVID? When he was already symptomatic and receiving treatment? Dude, this, this isn't true, man. Like, we're, we're gonna go over some articles and some sources a little bit later, but... Yeah, this isn't true. You don't need to all caps a bunch of false shit and then make that go viral because people are just literally looking for anything that they can grab onto at this point. And, and seriously, this is on both sides. Like, here's what Greg Gutfield said on Fox News. To the point about the script being flipped, the reason why it flipped, and maybe it's a flaw of Trump, is that he didn't hide from the virus. The reason he didn't hide from the virus is that he didn't want America to hide from the virus. If he was going to ask America to get back to work and experience a risk, he was going to do the same thing. So I think he put himself on the line, and that the flaw being that as an optimist, as somebody who was trying to convey a message that we are going to get through this, and things are going to be better, he had to walk that walk, and he had to do that. He could have scared the crap out of everybody, but he refused. And it goes back to his original point about trying to make sure that the positive attitude is maintained, along with a sense of concern. So he took the risk. He got the virus, but he was doing it for us. This is some mega cope, dude. Come on. Like, I definitely don't believe with the leftist point of view of shut down everything forever, this is the new normal. If you don't wear the mask at all times, even when you're sleeping or having sex, then you want grandma to die. But at the same time, I think this Trump got sick for us kind of idea is, is a bit stupid. Sometimes you get sick. It's just how it is. Sometimes you take precautions and get sick anyway, and sometimes you don't take precautions and you're fine. The virus is not an entirely controllable variable here. And it is a product of our own arrogance to think that we can manage this any more than we have, frankly. And of course, we do have the mirror universe gaslighting from, you know, the usual sources. This one's from the Washington Post, but they're all very similar. After Trump's positive test, conservative media goes after liberal critics, real and imagined. You know, if that happened, I, I haven't really seen it. What I have seen is a lot of people who are saying, LOL, I can't wait for Trump to die. They're writing their weird Trump fan fictions about how hopefully he's rotting away at the hospital and he's like on life support for like the next 50 years or something. And how RBG comes back from the dead to, to, to go to the Supreme Court and then give the election to Biden or some nonsense like this. It is kind of crazy the, the level of conspiracy theory I've seen online. I wonder if we'll approach QAnon levels. Maybe if Trump's in the hospital for a while. 
Like, check this fucking clown. I don't want to be alarmist, but a GOP source just told me this. Trump's condition is serious. He can go either way. Despite all the meds and the presidential care, they could lose him within three to four days. They're trying to make his condition look good to reassure his base. I have no way to confirm this report, but I felt like I should pass it along. Of course you did. You, dude, you're literally on Team Joe. Like, look at this. Yeah. Hashtag Team Joe, formerly chair of the Democrat Coalition, national finance chair for Draft Biden 2016, Long Island campaign chair for Barack Obama. Do you think you are a reasonable, unbiased source of information? This is literal dude trust me bro levels of sourcing. Pretty sure Trump boarded Marine One with a portable oxygen concentrator in his pocket with the nasal cannula. Was it can, can I don't know that is cannula going up his back, hidden in his hair and tucked under his mask. He is not as well as they say. Liar in chief. Look at this dude. Look at, look at this fucking tweet. Like the, this is just Trump being fat. All right, this is just Trump being fat. This is literally just a piece of hair. Like, you, you guys need to calm the fuck down, man. And this is not like a nothing tweet. Like this took off. But yeah, apparently he was feeling bad enough that he had to go to the hospital. So he hopped on Marine One and, and went out there. And the media wasn't happy about it. Here's CNN's chief White House correspondent. Trump did not stop for questions. Dude, he's got fucking coronavirus. He's going to the hospital. Fuck you. This is from the physician to the president. This afternoon, in consultation with specialists from Walter Reed and John Hopkins University, I recommended movement of the president up to Walter Reed National Military Medical Center for further monitoring. This evening, I'm happy to report the president is doing very well. He is not requiring any supplemental oxygen, but in consultation with specialists, we have elected to initiate remdesivir therapy, which I assume is some kind of therapy they've developed for coronavirus. He has completed his first dose and is resting comfortably. Yeah, back in June, remdesivir was being reported on as potentially a treatment for coronavirus. Uh, it's normally an Ebola medication. So, all right. Okay. Of course, at the same time, we were also getting this video. So, geez, who knows, dude? Uh, Jim, you were there when the president walked out of the White House and board a Marine One. Yeah, and I know you have some new reporting on his condition. Yeah, Anderson, I talked to a, a Trump campaign advisor just a short while ago who said uh, that this is serious, uh, that uh, the president has been having uh, some trouble breathing, uh, that he's uh, been very fatigued today, very tired. Uh, and, uh, you know, emphasize that, you know, this is not just a run of the mill trip up to Walter Reed, that this is a serious situation. Talk to another uh, source familiar with the situation this evening who said uh, that there are serious concerns among White House staffers about the president's condition. As of recording, this is the most recent update on Trump's status, which, I mean, there's so much floating around right now from both sides, people wanting him dead, people like thinking there's a conspiracy, people saying that he's doomed, people saying that he deserves it, people saying that he's he's on his deathbed and the government's hiding it, people saying that he's actually just fine, like everything is being said right now. But this clip is the most recent concrete word that we have. I recommended we bring the president up to Walter Reed as a precautionary me measure to provide state-of-the-art monitoring and any care that he may need. Just 72 hours into the diagnosis now, the first week of COVID, and in particular days 7 to 10, are the most critical in determining the likely course of this illness. At this time, the team and I are extremely happy with the progress the president has made. Thursday, he had a mild cough and some nasal congestion and fatigue, all of which are now resolving and improving. Never mind. While I was editing this video, um, this came out. This is, in fact the newest bit of information that we have from Trump himself. Take a look. I want to begin by thanking all of the incredible medical professionals, the doctors, the nurses, everybody at Walter Reed Medical Center. I think it's the finest in the world for the incredible job they've been doing. Uh, I came here, wasn't feeling so well. I feel much better now. We're working hard to get me all the way back. I have to be back because we still have to Make America great again. We've done an awfully good job of that, but we still have steps to go and we have to finish that job. And I'll be back, I think I'll be back soon. And I look forward to finishing up the campaign the way it was started and the way we've been doing and the kind of numbers that we've been doing. We've been so proud of it. But this was something that happened and it's happened to millions of people all over the world and I'm fighting for them, not just in the US, I'm fighting for them all over the world. 
We're going to beat this coronavirus or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to beat it soundly. So many things have happened. If you look at the therapeutics, which I'm taking right now, some of them, and others are coming out soon that are looking like, uh, frankly, they're miracles. If you want to know the truth, they're miracles. People criticize me when I say that. But we have things happening that look like they're miracles coming down from God. Man, he's quite fatigued, isn't he? Like, I know that he's trying to hide it, but his voice is a little bit gravelier than usual. Um, he's slouched over in front of a table. He's not standing up. He's got like he's not wearing a tie, probably because of the fever. I like he's trying to put on a brave face, but I actually do think he's quite sick. Damn. So there we go. I mean, it's not unlike the situation when um, Boris Johnson got coronavirus in the UK. People treated him like shit too. There was there was tons of stuff going around on Twitter about it from the so-called more compassionate side of politics that apparently cares a lot about everyone's health and well-being, when it comes to their political opponents, they just don't give a shit. I recall seeing nobody except the most vile people on the right dancing on RBG's grave. And yet, it seems to be every single leftist, like every single leftist with a few, only a few exceptions, that are like, I hope Trump dies, dude. Hashtag COVID caught Trump. It's honestly disgusting. It reminds me of the way that the old right behaved um, during the Obama era when they wanted Obama dead. However, what people are focusing on are Trump's behaviors leading up to his getting tested. Trump kept his regular schedule after learning his close aide Hope Hicks had COVID. US President Donald Trump learned on Thursday morning that his aide Hope Hicks tested positive for coronavirus, yet continued on with a full schedule of events, including a fundraiser at his New Jersey resort that raised $5 million. Trump's movements are being closely scrutinized since he later tested positive for coronavirus, announcing the news shortly before 1 a.m. Friday, Washington time. The White House has not said when Trump first tested positive for the virus, but Trump said on late Thursday he was awaiting the results. In between learning the news of Hicks's infection Thursday morning and announcing his own early Friday, Trump stuck to his prepared schedule. It is not known whether Trump was tested Thursday morning after receiving the news of Hicks's positive test. As soon as he found out he was tested, and as soon as he tested positive, he went into quarantine, said Larry Kudlow, his director of the National Economic Council. I can't give you the chronology because I wasn't there. On Thursday, Trump had no publicly scheduled events that morning after a late night return from a rally in Minnesota, a trip that Hicks also attended. She was separated from the rest of the White House staff on Air Force One on the trip home Wednesday night after falling ill. The press secretary, Kayleigh McKinney, held a briefing shortly before noon on Thursday, taking the podium without a mask. At that time, she did not know Hicks had tested positive. Trump left the White House at 1 p.m. Thursday, not stopping to speak to reporters before boarding his helicopter. He flew on Air Force One to New Jersey, and then by helicopter into his Bedminster Golf Club for a fundraiser. And this seems to be the point of contention. Did Trump know that his aide, Hope Hicks, had been diagnosed by 1 p.m. on Thursday? That's still something we don't really know the answer to just yet. But what we do know is that people online are losing their minds. They're saying that Hope Hicks was a plant to try to get the, the president killed. They're saying that Trump knew like two or three days ago and he just didn't care and he was going around speaking to everybody. Some people are saying Trump knew before the debate, like before even Hope Hicks got it. Like cr crazy stuff, right? And none of this has any proof from, from either side. It's all just literally people losing their minds. And now they're calling all of Trump's events like super spreader events and, and stuff like this. And it's like, come on, you guys have been promoting these fucking riots where there's thousands of people out in the streets, throwing Molotovs, burning buildings down, attacking people, shooting people. But anyway, like I always say, we have to behave better than our opponents. There is no reason to celebrate when anyone gets coronavirus. I would not be happy if Joe Biden caught it. I would not be happy if Bernie Sanders caught it. And I'm not happy that Trump caught it. I don't want my political opponents to simply die. But right now, that is the attitude of a lot of people on the left. And like I said, there's no surprise that attitude has manifested in street violence that has taken lives. Because the honest truth is, if you are at the point where you simply want your political opponents to die, there is no compromise with them, there is no back and forth, as Les Socialist Squirrel said, there's no marketplace of ideas. It's all, it all just boils down to class conflict, eternal power struggle, no reasoning, no coming together, just fight until one side is completely extinguished. If that is where the left is right now, then the only reason they haven't started a civil war yet is because they are complete cowards and they know they would lose. 
It is one thing to have a political opponent that you can debate with, that you can compromise with, that has a legitimate point of view, that you can at least understand, if not agree with. It's another thing entirely to have a political opponent that simply wants you dead. Whether that's for racial reasons, or class reasons, or political reasons, doesn't matter. If their baseline of politics truly is convert or die, and they're too inept to actually convert people, and too cowardly to actually enforce the die part, then they're honestly just a bunch of fucking losers, aren't they? Anyway, let's hope Trump gets well. Let's hope any leftist who catches the virus also gets well. And let's please bring politics back to a sensible location where we're not cheering for random chance to potentially kill those that we disagree with. Please, can we get back to that?